Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife news video. Now normally I do these on the camera, but I'm a little tied up for time today and I'm having some struggles with the lighting. So instead of that, I decided we'll just go with sort of a top-down view of a couple knives. And these are some newer knives, so I thought they'd kind of tie in with uh, knife news and also give you something to look at while I'm talking. Uh, now, one thing that I want to get out of the way right away is that a few months ago I did a review of the... Um, Max Evolution M1 designed and built by, or built, built by Millet Knives, uh, not designed by them. Uh, anyway, in that video, I talked about the fact that I was a little disappointed there was no uh, stainless steel inserts for the screws to screw into in the handle. Now, it turns out there are stainless steel inserts, and I just couldn't see them. Uh, even though I took the knife apart and examined it very carefully, they're all but invisible because of the way the knife is finished. So they are there. Uh, so a bit of a retraction there. I want to make sure I get that out to everyone so that uh, we're all on the same page with that. Now, there are some new things that I want to talk about. So I've got a list of new stuff that's pretty interesting. And then I've got a couple of other stories that I really want to talk about and generate some conversation around. So, um, that's, you may want to, if you're not interested in the new knives coming out, uh, skip ahead a little bit and uh, I want to do, I do want to get some feedback on a couple of stories that I find really interesting and which generated some good conversation. So that'll be coming up in sort of the latter half of the video. First up though, let's get to some new stuff. Um, the biggest one, or maybe the most immediate one, is that the M390 cut jacks are now available in stores. Really, really good knife. Um, I've been a huge fan of my... Uh, regular cut jack, and I think it's really one of the better value folders that is that is out there. Certainly comparable with you know some of the standards like the Rat One and the Tenacious, and and some of those value folders that are well loved and have a great reputation. I think the uh, I think the cut jack belongs right in the same camp with them as just a great great value folder. Um, that said. You know, the design is good enough that I think it will play well in M390 and G10. And again, the value there is, I think it's 150 for the G10 with the M390 version. And I think that's a great value uh, as well for the, the level of materials you're getting. Uh, so M390 should be available, or M390 cut jack should be available uh, at your average retailer. And a lot of people have asked me about that. So I wanted to get it out first. Uh, next up, V Knives. A new company is coming on the scene. V Knives from... Uh, Mike Vellacamp, who has done a number of things in the industry. He's been a long-standing member of the knife industry, but uh, most notably worked at Spyderco. And the reason that's most notable is because he, by his own words, is kind of basing his business model on Sal Glesser's business model from Spyderco. And I think that's, you know, Spyderco is a great company, and I think that's a wise choice. Uh, so I'll be really interested to see how that fares, and, and I really hope they do great. Now, it's a difficult time right now in the knife industry, and we'll talk about that. That's one of the stories I want to have some conversation about. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but I do wish them all the best, and certainly uh, hope to be able to get my hands on some of those models and share them with you as well. And I hope they're they're phenomenal. I really, really hope they do a great job and totally knock them out of the park in terms of you know just design and quality and everything else. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the Giant Mouse GM3 is re is out there in the wild now. Uh, there are a couple of great reviews out there. Nick has one. Nick Shabazz and uh, Everyday Con um, EDC Gear Reviews has one. Uh, EDC Gear Reviews has the bronze special edition or limited edition. Uh, I guess more limited edition than the standard Thai one. A um, couple things put me off about that knife. Uh, one, I can't get over that uh, nail nick. It seems completely out of place. Uh, and the knife overall is a little too small for me, but a uh, cool knife just the same, and I thought I wanted to mention it in the video. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the new Benchmade, the 9750 Mini Coalition. I'm going to move these guys out of the way. Uh, I have been carrying and using this knife for review, and I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with it. I, You know, I was... I didn't have very high expectations, and so maybe that's why I'm so impressed. But I gotta say, I have really enjoyed this knife, um, and you can probably, you know, you can look for a fairly positive review. There's not a lot that I dislike, other than the size, and that's just my own personal preference. So I'm trying to, you know, keep an open mind about that part. Uh, but I've got to say, I want to add here. So there's a new Benchmade. I'll roll in a picture. Uh, the 9750 Mini Coalition. It's an auto. It's similar in size to this guy. It's 2.63 ounces. Uh, looks like another win for Benchmade. Now, it's pretty highly priced. So um, my, my general... And by the way, that's one of my biggest complaints about Benchmade is they tend to be a little overpriced. 
But that said, they do seem to be doing well this year. Um, the, the knives that I've had from them, the Freak, uh, is, was excellent, and I absolutely liked it more than the Griptilian, which it's based on. The Boost, uh, again, I really liked it, and I absolutely like it more than the Barrage, which it's based on. And now, uh, this guy, the, uh, what number is it here? What's the... Really? Well, anyway, the bug out here, uh, I thought I'd see the, the product number, the numerical designation on there, but I don't. Uh, anyway, it's based on the 531, and I think this is better than the 531. And so they've really done some great things. Now, I know there's some big Griptilian fanboys out there, and so don't feel bad that I, I, I've just never been a huge fan of the Griptilian. Uh, but the Freak, I love everything about it. I like the size, the weight, the feel in hand, you know, carryability, just an awesome knife. Uh, so I think... So essentially, I share all that to say Benchmade is really doing well in 2017, uh, and even the quality control issues seem to be doing better. You know, I've done some research on the forums, and it looks like maybe they've they've began to pay a excuse me pay a little more attention there, and I think that's a really good thing as well. So new model from Benchmade, and you know the new models they've come out with this year have pretty well been um, home runs all the way around. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. One more thing I want to talk about under new stuff. This is the Real Steel G3 Puko reviewed a while back on the channel. Really, really cool little knife. A little too small for me. Um, I sold this knife and I just sold it to a friend who lives nearby. So I was able to have, have him borrow it or he was able to willing to let me borrow it for the video. Thanks, Bradley, for doing that. Uh, what I, the reason I have this knife here is because they're coming out with a titanium version. And if Real Steel does what they're able to do, I, you know, they don't always nail it. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the, uh, I wasn't overly impressed by the Griffin, the new, uh, the G, the titanium uh, carbon fiber Griffin in M390. You know, that one didn't seem to, to do as well for me. Um, but, but... Uh, their other high-end models have been astounding. And so if they do as well with the titanium version of this knife, even as well as they've done with the steel version, uh, I think it'll be a total win. Okay, so wanted to share that with you because that's pretty exciting to me. This was one of the coolest knives that I've seen from Real Steel. And so the fact that they're going to come out with a higher-end version, I think, is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, where do we go next? Oh, yes. Discontinued, I'll bring these two knives back in again so you got something to look at, but discontinued zero tolerance knives. So the 0909 and the 0804 have both been discontinued and because of that, you can find these guys for some pretty good prices. Uh, once a knife is discontinued, map pricing, which zero tolerance does enforce on their, you know, in production models, uh, no longer applies. Okay, so no more map pricing on the 0909 or the 0804 and whatever other models are out there that are discontinued, which is great for us as consumers because we can get some great deals. Um, the one sad part of this story is I tried to buy a 0909 from knifeworks.com and discovered that they are not through their web store, anyway, uh, through online purchasing, they're not shipping internationally. And I was pretty disappointed to hear that. Um, you know, at least for right now. Now, I did talk to them and they indicated that's probably not going to be the case forever. It's, you know, there are some changes happening and it's just because of those changes. So hopefully that will be remedied soon. But I was disappointed when I went to buy a 0909 and I had it in the cart and everything was done. And then they're like, nope, sorry, we don't ship to Canada. Uh, so anyway, that, uh, that was kind of sad. Uh, let's see. Uh, but, okay, sad for me, but if you're in the U.S., not sad for you. So let's let's end on a positive note with that story. Uh, let's see here. Sharpeners. Okay, there was a story here, and I'm not that interested in the story itself. Lansky sharpeners are fine, and they seem to be okay, and I've, I've seen some reviews, and they seem to do a fine job. But the, they had the six reasons the Lansky controlled angle system uh, is the best sharpener for you. Okay, uh, interesting story, and it made some compelling arguments. Now, where, I, where I'm really more interested is in the discussion that happened around that story. So I looked at a few different places and found people talking about and kind of arguing about whether or not an expensive sharpener was worthwhile. And a lot of people are like, look, I've got this Lansky. It works awesome. I would never buy anything else. I would never spend more money. And then other ones would say, you know, I've got a Cami or I've got an Edge Pro Apex or I've got a Wicked Edge and they are just amazing and they're well worth the price and you'll definitely get better results. Okay, so here's the argument going on. And where do I land? Well, I can kind of see both sides. And in some ways, I agree with both sides because I 
probably use a Spyderco Sharp Maker more than anything else, and I get very good results with it. I have an Edge Pro Apex. I use my Edge Pro Apex for some specific things, maybe really expensive knives, or fixing an angle, or reprofiling. Um, or if someone sends me a knife to sharpen, which does happen from time to time, uh, then I'll use it. But otherwise, I use the Sharp Maker, and it does really, really well. Uh, while we're talking about that, you know, I think there are some great sharpeners out there, and the one I'm most excited about is that Tech Studio sharpener out of Russia that that the Wrangler Star video is about. Uh, I really want to get my hands on one of those, but they're pretty stinking expensive, uh, and I think they're still. Last time I checked, they were still in back order. So, uh, anyway. Moving on, uh, one quick note on the story about uh, the best-selling blades that was done through Knife Center. It would be interesting to see uh, either from companies, you know, if Spyderco, Benchmade, CRKT, Kershaw, Cold Steel, you know, if those guys would reveal some of their best-selling models, I think that would be really interesting and I would really love to know that. But they keep that information pretty close to the vest, so we probably will never find out. Um, with, you know, Without that, even, even if we had a broader um, input from a number of different retailers telling us what their best selling models were, I think that would have been really, really cool to see. Uh, let's see, the last thing, and here's the other thing. So the two things I wanna hear your feedback on are number one, the sharpener story. What is your take on sharpeners? Do you have and use really expensive stuff or do you like the budget stuff just fine and feel like it's absolutely adequate uh, or even better than adequate? The second question though is, Something troubling. There was a story uh, talking about how the Grinch stole uh, uh, whatever National Knife Day. And the story was about the fact that this year the knife market is down another 5%, despite the fact that most people were predicting a, a bit of a rebound. Okay. Uh, the knife industry had been growing like crazy since like 2013, 2014. It was really rapid, good growth. And then in 2016, it really died off and took a real hit. And people said, well, that was because people were buying guns instead of knives. And they were buying bullets instead of knives because they feared uh, what was going to happen with a new democratic government. Well, the Democrats were already in power, so I'm not sure I totally follow the, the logic on that. But anyway, that was the story. Now, with a new Republican leadership, um, you know, gun sales should level off because people won't be as concerned about, you know, any of their rights to keep and bear arms being taken away in any, in any sense. So now knife sales should recover, but they haven't. Okay. Now I will say there are some exceptions. Um, we talked about the Benchmades and Benchmade is doing pretty well. Models like this are selling pretty effectively. Okay. Which is kind of neat. Um, and higher end stuff, zero tolerance and, and those kinds of things, some higher end spider codes, those kinds of things are selling okay. Uh, they haven't seen as much of a decrease, but it's the regular, you know, whatever, 35 to $135, you know, sort of mainstream knife sales that are kind of hurting right now. And of course that hurts the industry more than anything, right? You, you know, Kai is not making bank off of ZT. They're making their money off of all of those million cheap Spyderco models that are made overseas. I mean, cheap Kershaw models that are made overseas. And those are the ones that aren't selling that hot. So um, that's a little bit troubling. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you bought less knives this year than you did last year? Um, have you noticed your friends doing that? Uh, and, and what would you say is is to is the cause of that you know is it youtubers like me not sharing enough budget knives or is it you know the poor product placement or just that there's a, a lack of interest in knives of course the the reality here is that you know a knife is not a necessity okay i guess maybe one knife right but if you've got one good folding knife you don't need 15 or 20 or 30 you don't need to keep buying them the way that we often do and so that's going to be something that goes right away as soon as there's any kind of you know tightness in the budget you're going to go yeah no knives this month no knives this week no knives maybe this year okay and so that is a pretty troubling story and one that I'd really like to get your feedback on. All right, I think that's all of the stories that I've got to cover. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.